Hello chess friends and welcome to Yazar of Chess Channel and welcome to an absolutely beautiful attacking game played by Alireza Feruja against Denis Lazovic from the AI Cup in 2023 that you can follow now on chess.com. This game I really really like because it has beautiful new attacking ideas in the Italian opening and we, when you're maybe a beginner you probably start to play I don't know the Italian opening, the Royal Opus, the Queen's Gambit, the Client, the classical openings uh, probably are starting in the beginning and I think it's very important for us to see new opportunities, new ideas produced by top GMs uh, because they are also showing us the direction how we should play uh, some of these openings and I think here Alireza Firuja played really awesome, brilliant, sharp attacking ideas in the Italian opening in my opinion, really one of the best chess games so far from the AI Cup in 2023. Let's see now what happened with the white pieces, uh, Alireza opened with move e4, Denis Lazovic's response was e5, knight to f3, knight to c6 bishop to c4, the Italian openings on the board, bishop to c5 the Gioco Piano and now after move d3 we have the Gioco Pianissimo. Knight to f6 we have h3 prophylactic idea not allowing of course to play something like a bishop to g4 or knight to g4 a very dangerous move for white so that's why h3 come but beautiful beautiful defensive move here by Alireza. We have d6 c3 preparing of course in some lines b4 or maybe also in some lines of course to break and enter with the move d4. We have now the move a6 and this move of course is liberating some squares for the bishop but it allows also the further progressive ideas by white with the move uh, b4. If you play for instance something like a5 instead of the move a6 in, in order to prevent the move b4 then again you're leaving some weak squares in the position, position then you have b5 and d5 so you cannot really have it both ways here on this side of the board so Dennis went into this line with a6 but now Reza plays a4 so he's saying you'll never be able to play now the move b5 and now I'm expanding here uh, on the queen side with the move b4 if possible b5 a5 so these are now progressive ideas of course for white we have h6 Dennis Lazovic is on also uh, here not allowing to get pinned by the bishop on g5 castling castling we have now Rook to e1, we have rook to e8, and now a5. Really nice move here by Alireza. Paralyzing simply the queen side, but not allowing again something like, I don't know, b5 to happen. Then we have a takes b6, and then you're left with maybe uh, here a weak pawn on, on a6. So we have bishop to a7, and now a very, very interesting idea again by Alireza, bishop to b3. This is the way they go, because from this square, of course, the bishop can attack also the knight. So Alireza found a beautiful way how to include now the bishop further into the game. We have bishop to e6. Of course, Alireza is not interested uh, to play bishop to e6. Then it leads into this standard positions after f takes e6, then d5 for black, or even rook to e6, I think is, is a normal opportunity. So here Alireza is, of course, trying to be progressive is trying to complicate things and keeps now the pieces on the board plays of course bishop to a4 and hits also the knight on c6 in some lines if possible we can even play bishop take c6 and mess up the pawn structure here on the queen side we have bishop to d7 lazovic is not allowing that of course uh here after knight from b to d2 the problem is now you cannot pick up this pawn because after bishop to d7 queen to d7 the knight is hanging of course on a5 so that's why after knight from b to d2 knight to e7 and again alida as i keeping the pieces on the board. Now he retreated with the bishop on c2, but is connecting now the bishop to the square e4, and now he's trying to let the pawns roll in the center with the move d4. That's now the main plan. We have knight to g6, d4, so the e4 pawn is now really, really well protected by the knight, by the rook, by the bishop, so d4 is a good opportunity here for Alireza. We have bishop to c6 hitting now, further the pawn on e4, and now rook to a3. That's the move that I like the most here in this beautiful attacking game. Of course, it's strange to play such a rook in, in an early state of a uh, rook move in an early state of the game, but this rook will be probably shifted over maybe to g3, where it can create new new attacking chances. It's really a nice, nice attacking here idea by Ali Reza Feruja. Look what happened. So here, rook to c8 by Denis Lazovic. We have b4. Here, Ali Reza continues the pressure. We have knight to h7. Now bishop to b2. Connecting now the bishop to the square d4. And putting more pressure also against the pawn on e5. Knight to g5. Now comes the whole beautiful idea here by Reza. Co he connects now the rook to the knight on f3. And that's really, really awesome. Because many of us... Um, 
would play something else, I think. But here, Alreza is um, connecting every piece all over the board. That's that's really, really beautiful, beautiful setup here that he created. What should you do? For instance, if you play e takes d4, this wouldn't be good. It leaves maybe here the weak pawn on e4. But look at this. You're trying maybe something like knight to f4 and knight to f5. Very, very dangerous here to handle for black. You cannot even defend, I think, further this pawn. So in my opinion, not a good continuation here for uh, for Denis Lazovic. So that's why here after move c4 that Alireza played, Denis Lazovic played bishop to d7. And now here Alireza plays another beautiful move. Uh, d takes e5. In the beginning, it seems so that this is nothing spectacular. But now after d takes e5, now Alireza plays the beautiful c5 and paralyzes now the bishop on a7 and that's a really nice positional play because it's almost like uh, black is now the, continuing the game without the whole piece which is really really crazy in such a middle game stage that you have already already such a beautiful advantage for instance you cannot even play the move b6 in order to liberate the dark square bishop because after a takes b6 c takes b6 we can pick up now the piece the bishop is hanging you can of course protect it but now we continue the pressure look at this queen to a1 this pawn is weak so suddenly the position is in col uh, collapsing here for black in my opinion this would be almost game over so that's why here after move c5 denis lazovic at least found a good square in order to improve the position of of the light square bishop but now alheza continues with knight to g5 what should you do for instance if you try here h takes g5 then look at this the rook is coming in such a such a spectacular way into the game you play knight to f4 but now look at this bishop to b3 in some lines we play king to h2 g3 kick with the knight and continue the pressure here around the square f7 very very stunning stunning opportunities here for uh, uh for white if you try knight to d3 then of course would simply hit the pawn and uh the game is i think here messed up for for black for sure so really really crazy position already so after move knight to g5 that's why queen to g5 but now comes the whole concept the whole idea here by uh Alireza. he plays of course rook to g3 look where this crazy rook came uh first on a3 and down and then it shifted over to g3 really really progressive play here by Alireza. we have queen to e7 by denis lazovic and now basically there are two good choices you can play bishop to b3 uh in the game queen to h5 was played by Alireza. bishop to b3 may be slightly more accurate uh when it comes to uh top engine calculation but who cares i think Alireza has here already already a good position so uh we should not always evaluate the position uh what what is the, the stockfish engine saying i think uh when you have the advantage the most important thing for you is to keep the advantage maybe you started with an advantage i don't know plus two and then you're still continuing maybe then afterwards with a plus 1.5 evaluation it doesn't matter if you really uh find the optimal moves it's just important to keep the pressure bishop to be three as i said maybe slightly better because after knight to f4 we can include now the queen into the game you're trying something like queen to g5 we trade it off and now with knight to f3 this is already already very tricky you could maybe try here knight to d3 but now after something like knight to d5 or rook to b1 i think still uh white has great chances because this pawn is falling you cannot even play f6 because of the uh, beautiful diagonal of the light square bishop so you can create maybe a tiny little tempo against uh, against white but nothing spectacular here again white should be much much better so okay here in the game as we said queen to h5 was played by Alreza. here we have rook from c to d8 and now uh, we have bishop to b3 now by Alreza. so you see uh, although maybe Alreza didn't play the optimal move in the beginning, but he found, of course, this attacking maneuver. He's finding, of course, the best continuations. Now, we have f for bishop to b3, king to f8, and now knight to f3. Also, rook to f3 was an opportunity to, again, uh, threaten something like queen to g6, but knight to f3 also perfectly fine. Again, Alreza simply keeps the advantage. We have knight to f4. The queen is hanging. Now, queen takes e5. Look at this. Uh, the whole position is now collapsing because of this brilliant rook lift on a three and then followed it rook to g3 really really cool moves here by Lorena. queen to e5 bishop to e5 we have knight to h5 hitting the rook and now rook to g4 if you play here knight to f6 then obviously this is going to happen bishop to f6 g takes f6 rook to f6 we keep the attacking flow you have to protect it now we have even this one e5 
so you cannot basically defend this position it's really really messed up game here for uh for denis lazarik so after move rook to g4 that's why rook to d3 was played hitting now the bishop on b3 alreza plays rook to e3 look how he's protecting the position not allowing uh here any any counterplay for black after rook takes e3 f takes e3 and now also what's very important here the square f4 is taken the knight cannot jump here on this beautiful square of course so far this square is also protected by the bishop but we want to play more freely with our bishop so now there's no potential knight to f4 for sure here for black in the game g5 so uh, by denis lazavik now alreza played bishop to d5 hitting now uh, the weak pawn on b7 although he could have also immediately taken uh, the weak pawn on c7 so it doesn't matter still again alreza keeps the pressure here with this beautiful move what should black do the optimal way here maybe to protect uh, the position is to play bishop to b8 but still white is much 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 better we can of course then pick up this one you're trying something like c6 we trade off the bishops and then uh, we can of course inc uh, include the, the knight into the game first so uh, it's not a good continuation bishop to d6 of course maybe c takes d6 and then knight to d4 is a beautiful beautiful continuation here for uh, for white so that's why here after move um, bishop to d5 that alreza played here denis lazovic made maybe even now uh, the most important mistake of the game allowed now alreza finally to take out now the pawn on c7 but now after knight to f6 to fork against the bishop and the rook here alreza first delivers a check here you have to step back and now alreza picks up now the pawn sacrifices now the exchange uh after a knight to g4 h takes g4 look at this we have now a three versus one situation here on this side of the board the pawns are rolling they're basically unstoppable it's simply a one-way ticket here in white's favor so we have bishop to b5 of course denis lazovic is not allowing a further progress of the c pawn in the game knight to d4 by Lareza. still he's preparing c6 anyway we have bishop to d7 and now after bishop to a6 it's really really a messed up game we have rook to e4 by Denis Lazarus, but now b5, we have rook takes e3 and f move b6 in this particular position. Denis Lazarus resigned. Great, great, great attack here by Alreza Firuja in rapid form of chess, which is really, really crazy. He played the optimal attack, and I think this is useful. I think this is very instructive what Alreza did here. You can use, I think, some of these elements in your home preparation uh, in the Italian opening. Really, really beautiful beautiful attack by Oreza with this amazing rook lift on a3 in my opinion one of the most spectacular games so far played in the ai cup in 2023 okay i hope that you enjoyed this game i really really enjoyed it a lot if you want to see more beautiful chess games from this amazing chess event check out our coverage so far here are some links of some games that we have analyzed before and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and what do we say in the end chess is the best of course